Hello and welcome to the series of Rapid Minor videos. My name is Dr. Marcus Hoffman and I'm a lecturer at the Institute of Technology Blanchardstown and also the principal investigator of this project funded by the Irish National Digital Learning Repository. The series of Rapid Minor videos was created in close collaboration with Ralph Klinkenberg and Dr. Ingo Merswa, the two founding members of Rapid Minor. More videos as well as additional material to some videos can be found at www.rapidminorresources.com. I would now like to introduce Ralph Klinkenberg, who will talk you through this tutorial. Welcome to Rapid Miner. In many real world applications, data may have missing values. For some attributes, the values are not known for some of the cases. So let's start with a dataset where this happens. In the sample directory, there's a dataset on labor negotiations that illustrates this problem quite well. Let's just note this data. And take a look at the metadata information. You can see there's a lot of attributes. The class is whether their chances are good or bad to get a wage increase based on information like how long the duration of the employment is, whether there was a wage increase and how high it was in the last three years, and some other information like working hours, pension, shift differential, standby pay, holiday information, and so on. But for some of the attributes, there obviously are missing values. Like if there was a wage increase during one year ago, two years, or three years ago. And obviously, the further you go in the past, the more missing values there are, which is no surprise because many of the employments don't last two or three years yet, so there can't be that information. And there's others at, um, like education allowance, where maybe you just don't know. There may be yes or no, but for many cases, you don't know. So what to do with missing values? Some learning techniques can handle them, like decision tree learners typically can handle missing values, but other techniques cannot handle missing values. Techniques like linear regression or support vector machines need complete data. So what can you do? One thing you could do is to filter out the examples that have missing values. Just define a filter and say, I only want to see cases that have no missing values. Looking at this solution, from 40 examples in the beginning, only two would be left in this particular case. So this wouldn't be a solution here. There's too many at, um, attributes that have missing values, and there's only two examples that have all values specified. All other cases have at least one missing value. So filtering out the examples is no solution here. What about filtering out all the attributes that have missing values? Well, if you look at the number of missing values here, there's only one, two, three, four, five attributes that have no missing values, plus the label, which also has no missing values. Or in other words, from the 16 regular attributes, only five would be left. So leaving out all the attributes with missing values is also no solution. So cutting from the table all the rows, which would be the examples, or all the columns, which would be the attributes that have no uh, that have missing values and only keeps those that have no missing values would leave us with too little data, either too little rows or too little columns. Both is not desirable. So in such extreme cases, we should do something else. And this something else actually is called missing value replenishment. So in data, data cleaning, can replace, uh, replace missing values by specifying what you would like to do. First, you can specify if you want to address all cases or just a subset of the attributes. For now, let's start simple and say we want to take all cases and we just take the average. That is, for normal attributes, you will take the most frequent value and for numeric ones, you will take the average value. Doing this Will leave us with no missing values. So all the missing values have been replaced for the numerical attributes by the average and for the normal attributes by the most frequent value. So now all learning techniques should be able to handle this data set. Maybe that was a bit too simple. Maybe we want to do a more sophisticated approach by looking at the individual attributes one by one. You could, for example, say, well, let's first run to a breakpoint.
And for example, say, well, for wage increase, maybe the average is fine. Just go for that. But maybe for some other attribute, you would have, you would like something else. Like if you don't know anything about um, long-term disability assistance, maybe you would assume as a yes. Well, it's most frequent value, so that was done correctly already. Or maybe for um, vacation, if you don't know anything, you'd rather assume it's below average or average, but not generous. And um, or maybe it's average. So you could decide for individual attributes you would like to do something similar, something else. So maybe for vacation you want to do something else. And here maybe you want to set the value average, not the numeric average, but the nominal value average. That would be a treatment that you could do. Or, um, and well, let's just see what happens. Now, vacation has no more missing values. And most cases now have been assigned the average as the most frequent value or below average. You can do something similar for multiple cases at a time. I can still say, well, I try to catch all of them. and Whenever I don't specify anything, I take the average as a default solution. But for some cases, I would like to define a special treatment, like we just said for vacation. Now oh, where we are? Oh, there we go. Maybe there I take the minimum value, or maybe I take also the most frequent one. Or maybe for another attribute I do something else. Maybe for working hours, if I don't know anything, just take maybe the maximum. And for pension, if you don't know anything, maybe take Let's take the, the minimum, just to, to illustrate that you can use different things in here, one by one, and then specify whatever you need. So this would be if you want to replace values by constants, by average, minimum, maximum, a zero, or a constant value that you specify, like for example 99 or something like that. Similarly, you can replace infinite values and um, Actually, sometimes you may want to filter if there's attributes with too many missing values. You could use select attribute to deselect one of them. For example, if you say, well, there's this particular attribute, wage increase third year. I don't think it's reliable, so maybe I want to remove it. That would be a way how you could go and do that. Okay, so for now I think you've seen enough how to handle missing values. And um, further pre-processing operations are demonstrated in additional videos. Thank you for your attention. For further information on RapidMiner, please go to www.rapidminerresources.com or www.rapid-i.com. If you are interested in upskilling, please go to www.itb.ie where you will find more information about our distance learning MSc in Computing Science, in Business Intelligence and Data Mining. Many thanks to the Irish National Digital Learning Repository for funding this video.